So thanks for joining us again on another Digital Marketing Answered. Um, before we start, don't forget to subscribe on whichever of your favourite platforms you're watching or listening to us on. And uh, do please try and review uh, because that helps other people discover us. So um, for this episode of Digital Marketing Answered, I'm really excited to be joined all the way from Vilnius in Lithuania by Raza Siskut. Uh, co-founder and CEO of Looper Search. It's an intelligent e-commerce search engine that drives sales right from the search box. And Raza has over a decade of extensive IT experience, um, project managing in uh, Fortune 500 companies and a massive wealth of knowledge in e-commerce. So welcome Raza and I hope I've pronounced your name right. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, you're right. Uh, so my name is Rasa. So hello, Tim. Thank you for having me here. And it's a pleasure to, to talk to, uh, with you about e-commerce and uh, particularly about the e-commerce search. Yes. Yeah, so before we dive into the search bit, tell me a bit more about what inspired you to, to start Looper Search. Uh, to be honest, the inspiration for, uh, for Looper Search uh, came as a surprise for me. The, so the story behind is that uh, uh, my journey with Lupa Search have started unexpectedly. So I got a LinkedIn message uh, from my old friend, uh, e-commerce expert, uh, like uh, Rasa, please join us. Uh, uh, we have a great product. Uh, we see that we have a market fit for a intelligent uh, uh, e-commerce search. Uh, we have a great team, but we need someone to drive it and to uh, move it to growth. Uh, it was uh, like a ball from the blue. I haven't expected that type of message because uh, uh, I was part of uh, a corporate world. Uh, uh, I was very into project management in IT and I really enjoyed it here. So I took an opportunity So I just stepped out from corporate world and I came into uh, Lupa Search. And these two years when I'm here, uh, it's been a great journey. Uh, I have learned a lot and it's uh, speed, agile, uh, lots of new uh, people around, new customers, uh, uh, great product, AI everywhere. So uh, yeah. uh, uh, I feel that I am uh, on the right track and on the way uh, with the IT sector. Well, it, it certainly sounds like a fortuitous uh, message that you got through that. And, and you've, you've gone from the corporate world to startup world in a time of, of, of great change. So it must be really challenging. So, so tell us a bit more about the detail of what Looper Search actually is and what it does. So Looper Search is a B2B SaaS software that powers e-commerce search. So when we come to eShop and use the search bar for uh, communication with a store, so where the loop of search comes. Uh, so we are behind the scenes and we manage this communication and conversation between the uh, potential buyer in the uh, um, uh, search box and the results what you get from the uh, search catalog. Uh, for instance, I came to the eShop and I searched for a jacket. Uh, so as a customer, I would like to have experience at least good as we Google. So uh, yeah. I want that uh, autocomplete, suggestions, synonyms, typo detections, spell check, multi-language, uh, uh, did you mean functionality works well. Uh, on another side, uh, I want that uh, uh, search would understand the context behind uh, my query. Uh, so if I search for jacket, I want that it would be jacket for winter uh, because now it's winter uh, uh, outside the window. And uh, I want that it would be jacket for woman. I want that it would be jacket the color I like. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, more than Google. Uh, wow. Yeah, and we need to, to personalize the data uh, and to give the best uh, answer and, uh, and best example. Uh, so uh, in general, uh, Good search, it, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it definitely drives the sales uh, yeah. and have better customer uh, experience and expectations for the, uh, for the search and for the uh, searching the products. So, so effectively what Looper Search is doing is taking what normally would be, you know, a, a fairly, you know, standard search and it would, uh, 
it understands what's going on in terms of the intent you're saying and it's personalizing the search results to the individual as well as dealing with all of those things like typos synonyms that kind of thing yes also uh, uh from uh, uh online manager's perspective, it's uh, uh, important ranking of the product. So search and dicing or, uh, or merchandising of the product. So it's it also part of the of the solution uh, of e-commerce search and also recommendations uh, for the products. Uh, as a, uh, uh, e-commerce search is like a ear of the customer. So you uh, hear what they are searching for and you collect this data. So it's personal data you collect and group data you collect. Then you combine those uh, uh, two data sets and you have a good set for, uh, for recommending uh, uh, additional products and to have personalized um, uh, approach and, uh, uh, and personalized uh, uh, suggestions. Okay, so so sort of the, the title we've got for this in, is increasing revenue from e-commerce search. And what I'm hearing is that you're doing it actually from, from two ends, if you like. You're mm -hmm. improving the customer experience by when they search, giving them things which are, are more relevant to them. And by being more relevant, they're more likely to buy. And then at the other end, you're driving revenue by giving the e-commerce business insights as to what their customers, their prospects are actually looking for. And um, is that is that correct? Yes. Uh, and in the end, we need more uh, sales and more profit uh, uh, as online shop. So uh, from the intelligence, what we get from uh, e-commerce, we can do search optimization. Uh, okay. So we are able to manage the, sales, uh, the search by ourselves uh, also. So we can uh, do the ranking uh, to see that, for example, I want to rank based on uh, the margin uh, of the product. Or if I have a huge stock in, the, uh, in my uh, store, I want to yeah. sell it. So I, I can do it also by myself. I can add synonyms uh, by myself. Uh, oh. It's possible to have it uh, uh, a, AI generated, but also I can uh, add some jargons uh, by myself. Okay, so so what you're saying is, on the search results that the the retailer presents, you could actually evolve those results, so you can manipulate those results to push higher margin products higher in those results. You could push products that you particularly want to offload stock if you've got a lot of stock holding of them. Um, and then yes. you can also do synonyms um, for specific ones for for your product. That that sounds that sounds brilliant. I mean, what's the what's the data behind like how search forms the the journey for the customer in e-commerce? So the most important uh, data set is uh, top searches. Uh, uh, it's top searches, what the customers are searching for, uh, what's trending, uh, or which trends are declining, then uh, zero results. Uh, uh, so when the customer comes to the search box and searching for something and uh, uh, get zero results, it's uh, from a customer's perspective, is disaster. They want to leave the uh, uh, store instantly, especially with the uh, young generation. So yeah. we need to suggest something for them. And uh, uh, so this is a no zero results, uh, then uh, click through rates. Uh, so even if we search, but uh, uh, we do not click on the, sell, uh, on the proposed uh, product, it means it means something to me. Maybe the price is, uh, is too high compared to the market. Maybe the product is not correct and uh, I do not uh, um, uh, uh, fulfill the uh, customer's uh, uh, expectations uh, and uh, I simply do not understand the uh, customer uh, in my search box. So, so what you're saying is that the data is showing that there's a lot more to learn about the customer and the prospect from the search that people than people might assume. People, I mean, I remember back in the day, it's like, oh, well, we have search so people can can find the the thing that they want. But what you're telling me is that there's there's a whole load of really interesting information that you can mine there as a as a retailer. We have data, and we uh, need to hear our uh, 
potential customer. And also uh, we provide the um, user journey flow. So how the, cust uh, so how the uh, potential customer uh, looks into the search and how they act. So they uh, try search one time, no results, they leave, or they try to, another keywords to uh, to add uh, to find the the correct uh, product, or maybe they uh, add uh, uh, longer, um, uh, uh, more keywords into the search uh, box. Right. So uh, there are many data uh, which can be um, analyzed and uh, uh, decisions uh, can be made. Okay. So if we talk uh, about e-commerce, hmm? yeah, I, I was just going to say. I mean, it's it's. It's fascinating and it's very detailed and, and you're talking about a, a lot of benefits. There's probably marketing leaders sitting, listening to the this podcast thinking, yeah, but hold on, is is this for like multi-million pound sites? Is this for, you know, is this a really expensive technology? I mean, is this just for the, the very biggest of the big sites or is Looper Search something applicable for, for more mid-sized or smaller businesses? Uh, in the past, it was the uh, tool for the uh, huge businesses. Now, uh, it's uh, uh, also applicable for small businesses. And the prices uh, are from uh, uh, 200 euros a month uh, to have the search implemented into the eShop. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 200 euros a month is really not a, not a great deal. Of, <laughs> of course, uh, it depends on the number of, uh, of schools in the, in the shop, uh, uh, on the number of queries. But uh, in general, yeah. I think that it's a uh, uh, must have in the eShop. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it certainly, um, I think, comes back to what you mentioned before about having a search experience that is like, like as good as Google. Because the problem is consumer expectations are set by the big players, the Amazons and the Googles of this world. And if you're not reaching the similar kind of functionality and user experience levels, people don't care that you're not a massive organization. They just, they just feel that you should be doing it as good. So, so yeah, I could, it's, it's almost not, sounds like a necessity for an e-commerce business. Uh, so also I would like to uh, expand a little bit this expectation as Google. So expectation as Google, we have previous, uh, previously before ChatGPT came into the area. And in this uh, uh, AI era, uh, myself as a customer, I would like to be understood even if I do not have the right keywords uh, as you put into Google. So it's uh, even more challenging for for um, uh, online stores and for e-commerce uh, in general to to get the context from the query. Yeah. And with AI uh, coming into the uh, uh, into the area, we have those solutions. We are able to to catch the meaning. Uh, from the keyword, not directly uh, as keyword match uh, as we had previously, uh, but to find the real um, essence of the uh, of the keyword and to uh, provide the best uh, matching uh, uh, product from the catalog. Yeah, yeah, okay. And and how does how does Loop Search actually use AI within its own core uh, functionality? Uh, so there are, uh, of course, we use it, uh, and uh, as a small team and as a uh, small uh, organization, for us it was easier to implement uh, AI uh, uh, high-end tools and to use it on uh, on our um, daily activities and for our customers. Uh, so there are like two pillars uh, where we can use uh, AI. So first one is uh, uh, this mentioned uh, uh, context search or vector search, uh, where we are able to to get the uh, meaning and what the customers are searching for from the uh, query. Uh, and the second way of of using it is like a shopping assistant. So it's like generative AI. Uh, so we take all the data, uh, for example, uh, product catalog information to uh, to the model. We train the model, and uh, we can imagine like chatbot. And uh, I can ask chatbot uh, as an example. Uh, uh, Tonight, I would like to make onion soup. Uh, please give me the recipe. Uh, uh, please give me the um, products for that. 
Yeah. And I can get the recipe, I can get the products, and I can put them directly in, uh, uh, to cart and to have them. Uh, I can ask second question. I don't want to put wine into soup. What would you suggest? And okay. uh, I get the alternatives. Uh, another example I can write. I like uh, product uh, X, and I would like uh, with similar functionalities, uh, alternatives. And I also can get the answer. Right. So, and that's all that's within loop research you've got that capabilities yes yes we have these capabilities and uh, we are still testing and uh, now we can move to the challenges what we have with those uh, <laughs> uh, uh, capabilities uh, they yeah. are really good and uh, we are testing with our customers and they are wow it's amazing but nobody from the customers they want to be the uh, mm, challengers in the market and to start the first it, people yeah, yeah yeah they want uh, they say yes uh, it's really good but uh, they are coming back to their customers they do a uh, service and uh, say mm, our customers say that it's cool but uh, are they going to use it at this point we are not sure so they say we will wait for for half a year for the yeah. uh, our audience to be educated by others uh, and we will come right. back. Uh, and the challenge here is uh, uh we need to find the balance bef uh, between uh, affordability, quality, and speed. Yeah. Uh, because if we have high speed and uh, and good quality, it might be that the price for the uh, 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 for the model is quite uh, high. Right. Uh, if we have a lower price, it might be that the speed is not enough for the good e-commerce experience. So yeah. we are still testing, searching, uh, and we see that the market is evolving very, very quickly. And uh, in every quarter, we receive more information uh, and updates about pricing, uh, about increased speed from, from uh, um, uh, large language models. Yeah. So we are on track and we think that uh, uh, in uh, this year we will be able to, to have uh, the customers uh, um, who are live with those solutions and uh, yeah. uh, their uh, um, uh, conversions will increase. So yeah. it's about the chat uh, um, uh, part. Yeah. If we talk about this uh, vector search, uh, context search uh, uh, yeah. powered by AI, so we are already using it. It's very good for, for the uh, stores where uh, we do not have uh, good product descriptions because we are able to, to read the information from the pictures, from the uh, product pictures uh, for apparel, for uh, that type of, of, um, of products. It's, it's very, very useful. And we see the, the increase of uh, conversion for, for more than 20%. Wow, 20% increase in conversions. I think a lot of um, e-commerce site owners would love an increase in conversion rate by 20%, wouldn't they? And that's, uh, that's, that's a slam dunk, you know, people uh, are scrapping around for maybe if they can get a, a one, two or 3% increase in their conversion rate. So that's fantastic. Yeah, so we talk about search conversion rate, but uh, for search conversion rate as search, uh, uh, we see it's using more and more from uh, our data, uh, more than 30% uh, uh, customers are going directly to the search. Right. Okay. So 30% of customers go straight to search. That's mm. interesting because people spend a lot of time trying to understand the best way of structuring their site through navigation. And what you're saying is actually, you know, two thirds of the people benefit from that, but a, a, almost a third of the people are just diving straight into search and going, this is what I want. That's, um, that's fascinating. And it's average. Uh, we have shops where we have more than 70% so go directly to the search. Uh, if it's younger generation, if the products are, uh, for example, uh, groceries, we have 50% or, e or if it's B2B, so the search is very important for B2B business because they mm, have a, a very technical queries. They need exact product. Yeah. Uh, 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 and here we come with the solution. And uh, uh, even we had a, um, uh, a chat with one of our customers and he said, uh, as you said, we have invested so much time into having good navigation into our system. And we had yeah. an incident with the catalog, with our product catalog. And uh, during all day, we received only two customer requests uh, that uh, your catalog doesn't work. So it means that the majority of the customers, they used the search, but it was for B2B sector where they know what yeah. they are uh, searching and they know what they want to order. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting difference. And do you see like in the wider 
um, e-commerce market. Do you see um, AI and generative AI impacting other areas as well as search? Uh... Yes, of course, it's our future. Uh, so we cannot live without that uh, as we have started this journey. So I look into AI as, um, as an assistant, uh, which helps us to, to, uh, to increase productivity. Yeah. So even in our team, we, are, we always have those discussions. So what else uh, we can uh, use from uh, AI world uh, into our daily life to have a, a, a more productive uh, uh, experience and, uh, and the tasks done uh, and to do really important uh, things from our perspective. Yeah. In search, uh, it really helps for personalization. Okay. Uh, to collect the data and uh, to provide better results for the, uh, for the customers. Okay. Okay. And so obviously, um, you've got the AI being used internally in loop search, as well as obviously on e commerce. Um, how has the business kind of then evolved over the, the past couple of years? Um, I know you've grown grown a lot. Um, you know, how, how have things changed in your mind? So there are uh, advantages to be the late comers in the market. Uh, so as we are in search, we are in the shift from keywords uh, uh, searching and matching to this context uh, uh, search. So uh, and as we came um, uh, late, uh, we have the newest technologies. Uh, and for us, it's very easy to integrate all those new things uh, into our uh, product. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 if we compare with the uh, other um, uh, players in the market, so we, uh, from the uh, features perspective, we could say that we are uh, uh, the challenges in the market, and we have the the coolest technologies uh, 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 which we are using uh, for our customer experience and uh, and better search results and uh, 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 and better conversion rates. Okay. But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, we are. Uh, 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 so it doesn't mean that we have invested a lot in that. It means that uh, we have the solutions uh, powered by AI, uh, which we can simply implement into our systems. And for other companies, it took years to to, to develop it. As an example, this uh, uh, context uh, information from pictures. So. Yeah. Five years ago, it was something totally new, and uh, uh, not all the businesses were able to, to have it because it was very expensive technology. Now it yeah. is quite easy to integrate it into uh, into our uh, 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 current model and to have it yeah. uh, working for the customers. So you're you're almost saying that because you're later down the line, you're able to provide better technology more advanced technology actually a lower cost point because the maturity of the technology behind has uh, has moved on since early players went in there which is interesting yes yes and uh, also from uh, from customers perspective we see that uh, um uh, the average conversion rate increase uh for our new customers if we compare uh, their previous uh, search provider and and us it's from 10 to 20 percent uh, 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 conversion rate increase so I also think that uh, we are uh, really uh, uh, comfortable uh, with our product and uh, in our marketing communication and in our uh, mm, uh, proposal for our uh, potential customers we even say that uh, we are assured that uh, uh, the search conversion increase, if not, we will pay 10,000 uh, euros for you back. Uh, wow. Because we are uh, sure that uh, uh, your search conversions will increase. And that, we add that, it in the contract. Wow. That's a, that's a big promise you're making there. That's uh, That just shows how confident you are of that technology. It's fantastic. Uh, and another side of that, uh, what I would uh, also to, to emphasize is about this data uh, again. Uh, so even if we have this proposal for our customers, um, they are saying, okay, but what we are going to measure and compare. So sometimes they do not uh, uh, have any data about search. So in yeah. this case, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, 
so we are not able to benchmark uh, their previous year but uh, in general the data behind the search is uh, really valuable and uh, and can and can fulfill the the business okay and um, obviously um you you deal with a lot of e-commerce companies a lot of successful e-commerce companies those marketing managers marketing directors leaders of um, e-commerce businesses that are listening to this podcast what would you say to them are the things that they really need to focus on going forward in this age of um, evolving um, customer customer needs and customer demands uh, I think that personalization is uh, is the key aspect of uh, of e-commerce and as we are moving to a uh, cookies less world uh, so it's very important yeah. to have a smart uh, uh, personalization it means that uh, it's not should be very obvious uh, from the data and from my previous uh, uh, behavior so it's important to collect uh, the individual data and group data and to combine and and to have something here uh so i think that this is the most important and and again about the data personalization uh, and the data they're the they're the key things to to success going forward okay um so uh, in terms of uh people wanting to connect with you and with looper search how how should they try and get hold of you uh they can always uh, uh find me on linkedin uh, of course, they can write me uh, an email, rasa at loopastage.com, or just go directly to www.loopastage.com and ask for demo. And for demo part, also, uh, we are leaders in the market because we suggest to do the demo with a, a particular eShop uh, uh, product catalog. It means that you can have our search uh, in the test environment and you have your uh, uh, search in the production and you can compare both and see uh, which works better from your perspective and to, uh, to make the business decisions based on data fantastic yeah it sounds like uh, it sounds like you're very very data driven which i'm i'm a big fan of and uh, i know we've had conversations about better decisions from data that's absolutely fantastic um I'm sure that people will have got a lot out of it. And I, I imagine that actually they're really now thinking also about how good is their search and it, and something that they should be reviewing um, and looking at to drive their conversion rate. So so thank you very much, Reza. It's been, been a pleasure talking to you uh, and having you on. Um, I think we, we might, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, I apologize if there were some moments where the, the picture went a bit shaky. I think there was a couple of moments of, uh, of poor internet connection, but hopefully that hasn't spoiled your enjoyment of this episode. And uh, Raza, thank you very much for coming on to talk about increasing revenue from e-commerce search. Thank you to those people watching and listening um, for your time. Please do like, subscribe and comment. We really appreciate all the feedback that you give. And uh, until next time, um, have, a, uh, have a great time and be successful. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for inviting. Okay.